guys, what's up? It's Pastor Jonathan, and man, I have missed you guys. Between camp and not feeling the best last week, and we're out again this week, I'm just so ready for us to get back and worship together and just hang out. But let me catch you up on a couple of things that I am really excited about. First, this Sunday is Baptism Sunday. So if you haven't signed up yet, but you'd like to get baptized, all you have to do is text BAPTISM to 573-279-3851, and then you'll get a link immediately after to register. It's super easy to get baptized on a Sunday morning here at The Point. Next, we have Messy Bash, and it's going to be incredible and, well, messy. I smelled like mustard for two days afterwards, but it's super fun and a great time for us to get together. But I do need you guys to invite a friend and register. So don't forget to text Messy Bash to 573-279-3851 if you haven't already. And finally, next Wednesday night, August 11th is a huge night. We'll be taking some time to write cards to the teachers and the staff at the JR2 School District. We just want to be an encouragement and let them know that we are praying for them as a church, but also you guys right here at the point are praying for them as well. And you know what else is next Wednesday night? The first night we get to welcome the new 7th graders coming up from Kids Point, and I'm so pumped to meet each and every one of you as well. And we're here to help you get connected with the other students and your leaders to help you grow in your relationship with God and then help you to go into your school, your home, your online games, anywhere and everywhere you go, taking the gospel and the love of Jesus Christ with you. Did I tell you that I'm pumped? Because I'm pumped. And I know that was a whole lot of information. Feel free to rewind this and go back. But now I want to get into a real quick teaching on something that I think can help all of us right now. Most of us believe that Jesus is real, right? And sometimes it can be hard for us to believe at times that other people don't believe or don't know Jesus or don't want to know Jesus. So let me ask you this question. Have you ever felt there could be some sort of added pressure when it comes to telling other people about Jesus? Like, what if I don't know the right words or don't have enough knowledge? What then? I can't talk about it if I don't know everything. Ever feel that way? I've been there. I want to clarify something for you. Telling others about Jesus is not the same as convincing someone else there's a God or Christ is real. See, the definition of convince is to cause someone to believe firmly in the truth of something. The truth is, the only one who can cause someone to believe the truth of God is the Holy Spirit. So your responsibility isn't to convince them, but to tell them. And the easiest way to tell them is by using examples in your own life. And of course, your actions. That's what you're responsible for. We all know that John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life, right? Well, the only way we can have everlasting life is if we're in heaven. And the only way we're in heaven is if when Jesus died, he rose again. Let me ask you this question. How can we convince someone that Jesus rose again? Think about it for a second. Acts 1, 3 says this. After his suffering, talking about Jesus, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. So you mean to tell me he gave many proofs? Him there talking about the kingdom of heaven wasn't enough? Think about it. That's crazy. So Jesus has been crucified. He's on the cross. He's rose again. Now he's talking to these people, and he still had to give many convincing proofs. So let me ask you this question. Do you think that it's reasonable, that it's up to you to convince someone that Christ is real or God is real? No. It's not an argument or a debate that you can win or lose. Now, your actions may tell a different story if you're saying Jesus one moment and nothing close to God will come out of your mouth the rest of the day. Totally get it. But the Bible says in John 13, 34 through 35, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. So we should all be bold in our faith, not afraid, not ashamed to share what God has done in our lives. But we have to know that God will take care of the rest as long as we do our part, right? My old pastor used to say, I'm just a beggar showing another beggar where to get the bread. And what that means is I'm an imperfect person bridging the gap between this person and God and in both what I say and what I do. The rest is between them and God. So keep crushing it. Be the light. Be the hands and feet of Jesus everywhere you go, but remember there is freedom and peace in the name of Christ. 
not just from sin, but the fear and anxiety and pressure that can come from sharing it with others as well. I hope this helps. I'm planning on doing a much, much more in-depth uh, teaching on all of this, but this has really been on my heart, especially with, um, you know, the last time that I talked with some of you was actually at camp, and this was something that was on your heart, so it's been on my heart. Um, I really hope that this gives you just a little bit of encouragement, but then also a thought process of, man, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to go and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Whenever I, there's an opportunity for me to tell somebody about Christ, I'm just going to tell them, especially whenever it's something that God has done in my life. And leave the rest up to him. Man, I love you guys so much. I cannot wait to see you next week. I just pray that you just keep crushing it. And if you need anything, feel free to reach out to myself or one of the leaders and just know this whole time we've been praying for you, praying over you. And man, I cannot wait to be with you on August 11th. I'm so pumped. And don't forget, Messy Bash, invite a friend and register. And I'll see you guys soon.